to Northwest City Politics in the know with Juanita. We're glad to welcome you back to our show again this week. We're always happy there are people like you out there that are interested in what's happening in our cities. But we're getting close to Election Day, November 5th, and this year we have one of our cities, Golden Valley, has a city election. They're electing a mayor and two city council people. So for the next several shows, we're going to have candidates on who will share their ideas with you. And if you're from Golden Valley, be sure to take down their name and their phone number and their email address. If they're dealing with issues that interest you, be sure to be in contact with them. We're very happy tonight to welcome both Joni Claussen, who Thank is you. on the city council and running for the city council, Thank you. and Shep Harris, who is mayor and running for mayor. Thank so you. we're glad to have both of you with us tonight. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll, we'll start with you, Joni. I wanted to give you a good opportunity and Shep to, to introduce yourself out to our wider audience because they wouldn't know as much about you, but particularly to the people in Golden Valley, kind of keeping in mind how your background has prepared you to be on your city council. Well, I'm Joni Claussen and I am running for re-election to the Golden Valley City Council. I have quite a history in Golden Valley. My parents moved there in 1948 oh. when I was a year old. Mm. And they moved to the first housing development in Woodlawn Park. Huh. And yesterday I turned 72, so I've lived there just about as uh, long as the farmers. Pretty good. I've a uh, long history. My dad served on the council. He's the grandfather of the parks. He also is founding father of Northwest Cable Television. Uh -huh. So I grew up with this. And um, Golden Valley ran through my veins, because uh -huh. I always said my dad, if Golden Valley burnt down, he would be on the last ash because he loved it so much. And so I grew up with that love. Uh -huh. And when my children grew up and got out on their own, I just decided to carry on his legacy. Uh -huh. And um, I've had a wonderful eight years. There has been a few times I wondered what um, I had signed up for. <laughs> but I have loved being on the council, making a difference. Uh -huh. I have been involved in, um, I've been Mayor Pro Tem, I've been Chair of the HRA, I have been the liaison to the Human Rights, the Human Services, and the Civil Service Commission. I've been a member of the Pride Festival oh, since right. the um, first year of 2016 and that has been a wonderful wonderful experience i've been the representative to the blue line Co coalition and um i'm the representative to the corridor management um of the met council from uh -huh. golden valley i'm also on the board and commission here at northwest community television i've been a past park and recreation coach I have taught school in Golden Valley. <laughs> I've been past member of the Human Rights Commission or the Human Services Commission and past treasurer of the Historical Society. So I have a rich history. Uh -huh. I love Golden Valley and I'm running because of that love for Golden Valley. I care. Mm -hmm. I believe I provide a balance on the console. And um, I, I think I believe I uh, bring a common sense approach to decisions. And I think that's really important. I've been told that I am the voice of reason. And I take that <laughs> seriously. That, it's kind of nice to hear. Because we make hard decisions. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's not really that easy. I'm dedicated to making our city a thriving community to work live and play. I have the history, I have the experience to lead the, our city forward. I love Golden Valley, I've served for eight years and I'm proud to have made a big difference in those years I believe. And then I asked you ahead of time with some ideas of issues that were important to you that you'd like to share with our audience out there. 
What's one of the issues you'd like to talk about? Well, I think my first issue that's really import, important is fiscal responsibility. We need to prioritize our needs and wants in relationship to the cost to our citizens and to our city. And that's one goal that we brought forward. I brought it forward in January and it was voted on the council to follow through this year. Our taxes are a little high in Golden Valley, mm -hmm. but our residents also really like the services. Ah. But we have to find a balance mm -hmm. because we do not have a blank check. City, uh, city budget is a lot like ours except much more complicated. We only have so much money to go around. So we as a council to decide what our goals one of the things that's been infrastructure. Mm -hmm. It's important to maintain and keep up our infrastructure because that's what makes our city strong. It's what keeps us going. And if we let that go, we'll never catch back up. And so um, keeping our taxes down so people can afford to live or keeping them reasonable, we're never going to be able to um, reduce them. <laughs> but right, I would right. like to, but that's yeah. just one thing that's right. not going to happen. But this um, past year or so, we have put in a debt reduction plan uh -huh. because we have high debt in Golden Valley, about $69 million because of our pavement management uh, program uh -huh. on our roads. But that is coming to the end. But we need to deal with that debt because that debt also adds to the taxes our citizens have to pay. So if we can reduce that and as other things go up, hope, hopefully we can find a balance to, uh -huh. um, so our citizens can still afford to live in Golden Valley. We have a high number of seniors mm -hmm. and they're on fixed incomes and we have to think about that. A lot of them, they live in their homes but all of a sudden they can't afford it because taxes get too high. So we need to be responsive to um, those concerns. Also, we want to attract young families and young professionals. But when you have young families, it costs a lot to live. You have oh, yeah. child care, you know, uh, food, electricity, everything that we all have, bills every um, month, that we need to make our city affordable. And I think that's one of the things that's really nice about Golden Valley. We offer a wide range of housing. We have smaller houses uh -huh. with smaller lots. We have more expensive houses with big lots. We have average houses. We now have apartments. We have townhouses. Um, uh, we have facilities for seniors. And it's very important because I believe if we want to uh, be sustainable in the future. We need to have a variety of housing stock for people. Kind of life uh, cycle. Right. You know, you can start out and uh, move on as you age. And I think that is really important. But as we do that, we have to think about what we are spending by prioritizing. We can't do it all. Uh -huh. And, you know, um, one thing we're talking about doing the downtown area now. I'm not really for that because in the 1990s, the downtown area, all except the old shopping center, was tax increment financed to improve that area. Mm -hmm. The city had about an $11 million investment. And I feel that we need to see that investment through. Some, one area just went, uh, was decertified in 2010, and we need to see the, reap some of the benefits of that investment. And um, so to start over now, plus we just built Brookview two years ago, we have to kind of pull back a little bit, maintain our infrastructure, uh -huh. which is, you know, uh, if you can't flush your toilet or you don't have water, <laughs> we would hear about it, you know. Definitely, and right. so we have to be really sensitive to where our money is going. Also, 
Um, I'm going to pick a couple other things that I think are sure. kind of interesting. You talked about values. Mm -hmm. What values do we really want to see Golden Valley keep? One, I want to remain a welcoming community. Golden Valley, we're very proud. We have the highest number per capita of gays than other, any other city in Minnesota. And that's one reason why we started the Pride Festival, right. to right. celebrate the gay community. And um, now we have uh, people coming from all over different cities to enjoy that festival as well. But to the black community, you know, to, um, all the different communities, different cultures, we want to be welcoming. And we started the Rising Tides Task Force to look into embracing um, diversity and how we can incorporate that in Golden Valley, how we you know, do our contracts, who we hire, and I think that's very important. So that's a top priority. Also engagement. Mm -hmm. We have smart, engaged citizens, and we want to continue that because they bring great ideas to our community, and we need that feedback. We all need to work together, and I want to continue that because using our citizens, our council, our city, we, I believe, can move forward in the best and most positive mm -hmm. way. Balance. I want to continue balance, especially on the city council. We have, you know, if you had 10 people, nine different ideas would come. <laughs> right. So we need to take those ideas and find a balance, work together, and find a happy medium if we can. Sometimes we don't have that option. It's just uh, A or B. But a lot of times we can find uh -huh. a happy medium. And I think that is so important because um, in our world today, in the state and national, it's like my way or the highway. We all need to work together. Transparency. Mm -hmm. We need to be transparent because people need to know what's going on. And I think we have been uh, on our council and in our city, and I'm proud of that. The other thing, the value of our history. Uh, in the last couple years, we have a, a new museum right, at the Historical right, Society. Right. I, I think it's wonderful. It's exciting to see it. Um, I'd like to see some little changes once in a while in it because we've had a long history. Right. But I think it's been really beautiful um, and such an added attraction to Golden Valley to understand where we have come right. from. I'm kind of lucky because I've lived in Golden Valley so many years. I have watched Golden Valley grow into the city it is today. And I remember when there was a stop sign on Glenwood <laughs> and Highway 100. Yeah. You know, I've seen a lot of changes. When my parents moved here, they called it the boondocks. We've come a long way from 1948. Okay, I'm going to stop you there because I want to give you enough time to tell the people out in Golden Valley why they should vote for you on November 5th. Well, Golden Valley citizens should vote for me because I believe in balance. I believe that we have to find a happy medium. We have to work together. We, there's so many different ideas, but we have to find a balance in the decisions we make. I also am very responsive, and I am a good listener. And I bring, you know, I get a call, I respond, I find out an answer, at least they know, um, they might not hear what they want, but they know what the truth is. I'm honest, I'm hard working. I work very hard as a council member. I've given a lot. I, I do believe um, I deserve to be uh, reelected again because I bring a lot um, to the council. I bring the honesty, the balance, I bring common sense, and I think those qualities are really important. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now we'll move on to Chef Harris. 
Well, okay. the, the same go through. Um, introduce yourself to our wider audience, because Golden Valley probably knows quite a bit. But there's probably people out there that need to know more about you come Election Day. Mm -hmm. Sure. So, well, well, thank you, Winnie. I appreciate your, your hosting us mm -hmm. again for uh, another, you know, another cycle of elections. Uh -huh. Um, so yes, I am Chef Harris, I'm Golden Valley Mayor, uh, but there, we do have new residents. I've been doing a lot of door knocking, uh -huh. and yes, there has been some turnover. And so for those out there that, that don't know me, um, I've, uh, I've lived in Golden Valley for 15 years, I'm married, I have three kids, two of whom go to Armstrong High School. Uh -huh. Go Falcons, right? right. And, uh, and one who attends the Heiliger Minneapolis Jewish Day School. Mm -hmm. um, I am not originally from Minnesota. I've lived here for 22 years. I'm originally a New Orleans kid. Ah. So I lived at the other end of the Mississippi uh -huh. River and uh, heard great things about Minnesota. And mm -hmm. so that's why we moved up here. But uh, growing up there was a very transformative time for me. I did a lot of political organizing, uh, even as a young kid, uh -huh. including against uh, the infamous David Duke that we oh, all know about right. from the, the Ku Klux Klan when he ran for the state legislature in the U.S. Senate. Um, I went to college in Washington, D.C. I went at, to American University. Uh -huh. Can't get much more patriotic than that. <laughs> right. uh, I worked on Capitol Hill for a couple years where I met my wife. We moved out here so she could go to graduate school and fell in love with the area and so we've uh, we lived in as I said before in Golden Valley for 15 years mm -hmm. I've worked a couple years up at the state capitol and then after that since then I've uh, been uh, an advocate for a number of organizations uh -huh. within the Jewish community, uh, the Girl Scouts, uh -huh. River Valley's Council, uh, for an organization called Youth Prize, uh, an, a Somali youth development organization. That's just a few. Uh -huh. And so I do that up at the state capitol. That's my, my real job, uh -huh. uh, as opposed to, you know, I know some right. people call this the side hustle, but this is also a pretty, uh, pretty full-time job. So since, uh, since we moved to Golden Valley, been active or a member in a number of groups like in my neighborhood. We call ourselves the Bassett Creek huh. uh, neighborhood, um, although Bassett Creek goes through many neighborhoods, right. but we like to, to claim some of it for us. I've uh, been uh, an active member of the Rotary and been involved in Golden Valley Girls Softball, Golden Valley Little League, uh, the Sweet Potato Comfort huh. Pie program that's been oh, around right, happening. Right. The pie is delicious. Um, been involved with the Robbinsdale School District and their Legislative Action Coalition. I'm a member of the League of Women Voters and the Golden Valley Historical Society, just to name a few. Right. Uh, but as a result of this experience and, uh, and now two successful races for mayor, I feel like a, I've been an advocate for individuals to City Hall and I've been an advocate for our community with, with many successes. Mm -hmm. And uh, for those that may be new to the community, I met someone just the other day who moved into town three months ago. Ah. Uh, so they may not know a lot about what's going on and so I, I just, what I'm doing is I'm highlighting uh, three big areas okay. and you know, nothing new. You heard some of it from Joni, you've right. heard from others as well, but um, I feel like number one, we've done a great job of reinvesting in um, and innovating in our infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So places like Brookview Community Center, right. uh, we have a, a Ninja Warrior Challenge course. <laughs> uh, we even have pickleball courts. Mm -hmm. That's all happened in the past four years. Uh, we've taken on some key social justice issues, mm -hmm. which I think are really important. Areas like racial equity, uh, gun safety, affordable housing, uh, immigrants' rights, and keeping tobacco, or soon we will be right. keeping not just tobacco, but even the flavored products uh -huh. away from our teenagers. Uh, so I think those have been really important. And finally, that, that third area I think that I like to brag about is the governance, mm -hmm. that we have done it in a collaborative way. We have reached a lot of consensus, and as a result of that, uh, we've been able to reduce our debt. Uh, Joni said our debt is high, but it used to be much higher. It used to be four years ago, we were closing in uh, between 90 and $100 million. Wow. We've reduced it down by almost 30%. So pretty proud of that. Mm -hmm. We've uh, assisted a number of our local entrepreneurs, more than 100 entrepreneurs over the past five years. We've done it in partnership with the city of New Hope right. and with the county. And uh, we even have a new great restaurant called Lat 14 on Highway mm -hmm. 55, which is a beneficiary of that program. And we've also updated our 21st century communications through Twitter and mm -hmm. Instagram. So we, we continue to keep innovating and trying new things. And we've done a lot of those accomplishments. And I've got some other ideas, but uh -huh. maybe I'll, I'll stop there. Oh, we still have a little time for you. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, OK. I want to, our audience to hear as many different sure. topics so they've been something to weigh in balance, right? Sure, sure. No, we've, we've got, okay. we've got plenty of time. Well, definitely in those, those three areas that I mentioned right. before, you know, infrastructure and um, social justice and governing. 
those are areas that we still need to do more work on. Uh -huh. And so we've already heard a little bit about our downtown area. We do need to focus on that. We need to revitalize it in a way that is more pedestrian friendly, frankly safer for anyone who's taken that pedestrian crossing <laughs> uh, by highway f over hip Highway 55. Uh, we need to look at our City Hall campus. Can we collaborate with the county and combine forces with our library, oh. shrink the footprint of our City Hall, and then with the, the current public property, do we bring in a developer to um, put in affordable housing? Could be townhomes, could be uh, what are called tiny houses. Oh, right. uh, so, but we have to look at that. And what's good about it is that we're already starting to have that conversation with uh -huh. our community. We will start that next month. Um, I think the real issue for our community is going to be, uh, we're gonna have an important decision to make for the future. Um, we have two choices, uh, especially about the old Golden Valley Shopping Mall. Uh -huh. um, we can either continue to look at it for another 20 plus years, or we can do something about it. And the concern I have is when our local shops like the UPS nearly loses its franchise because mm -hmm. of the condition of the Golden Valley Shopping Mall. When Milton's Restaurant, which is a great restaurant, but it's in yeah. Crystal, guess right. where they wanted to be? The Golden uh -huh. Valley Shopping Mall, but they were rebuffed. Four years ago, I introduced the, uh, the Wedge Co-op to open up a shop at the oh, Golden Valley Shopping Mall. Route. After four months of negotiations, they got fed up with the owner uh -huh. and walked away. That impacts our community negatively. Oh, and sure. so we have the choice and the opportunity to shape our community as opposed to letting others shape our community. And so I do think we need to get more aggressive. Right. And we can be creative in the ways to finance it too. Uh, and that's why I think we already are benefiting from the value of those TIF districts where we have, whether it's Golden Valley Commons or Town Square. So we just need to be open about it and look at our priorities and look at what the expenses are, what are realistic, and see what we can do to be creative about that. Uh, so in addition to the, the downtown area, we still gotta work on light rail. Uh, we're talking about bus rapid transit, oh. possibly down Highway 55. Uh, we need to do a better job of protecting the charm of our neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some neighborhoods that are still experiencing a lot of redevelopment, uh, getting kind of crammed in certain yeah. corners of the community, which is uh, affecting that charm of our neighborhoods. Oh, right. And so we need, to, we need to keep our eye on that. And uh, you may have heard uh, Steve Schmigal earlier talk about uh, underpasses or overpasses right, on right. Highway 55. Well, um, we are already working to try to get some state dollars to fund uh -huh. some of that, including the underpass over by the Perpich Center. So infrastructure is one area, social justice, we just need to keep continuing uh, on the advancing the racial equity issues. We've got affordable housing protections, which do not go far enough. We have seniors who, who are, that I've talked to recently, right. who are, feel like they're gonna be kicked out of their apartments any moment because the rent has gone up twice within one year. And so the, the affordable housing protections that we passed do not go far enough. That's a challenge right now, isn't oh, it? Absolutely. Just giving people three additional months before they're kicked out isn't enough. They're still mm -hmm. getting kicked out. Uh, and that, that law, that ordinance, only applies within the first three months of when a housing unit, a building, has right. turned over new ownership. You know, four months, five months after the fact, immediately they can jack up the rent. And that's not ah. doing anything to protect our residents. Right. Right. So we've got work ahead of us in, in those areas. And finally, in the governance, I feel like we, we still have more to move our community forward in engaged, responsive, collaborative ways. Um, so you know, I think it's, especially in, when it comes to those issues, we, um, we need to keep innovating and trying new ways to communicate. It's a two-way street with our businesses, with our residents, with community members and we're trying different things already, but uh -huh. we can do more, whether it's through social media or face-to-face -face encounters and meeting residents where they are rather than just waiting for them potentially to come in through the front door of, of City Hall. So those are you know, three areas where I think that um, I'm hoping to keep going forward and working collaboratively with our City Council. Yes, you have to give pitch. your pitch right. to Golden right. Valley. Well, thank you, I appreciate that <laughs> opportunity. Well, I would say when you stack up my record over the past four years, um, and, and I want to show some contrast, and I think there is some contrast between oh. myself and my opponent. Uh, when, I, when I compare my record to his, um, I feel like I'm standing on solid ground in those three areas I mentioned uh -huh. before. Protecting and investing our neighborhoods and our infrastructure, focusing on social justice issues and governing in an engaging collaborative style. Um, you know, I was thinking about this, and, and compared to my competition, I show up. Um, I actively support our community, uh -huh. our neighborhoods, our businesses. 
I'm accessible, I'm approachable, I've been told I'm a good ambassador, someone even called me a good cheerleader. <laughs> uh, I, I promote the, the community, I, I drink from Golden Valley mugs every uh -huh. day. Um, I feel like uh, I've succeeded in obtaining outside funding for our playgrounds, our infrastructure, our transit corridors to try to keep our taxes down. Um, I've been a positive, strong advocate for our residents, and whenever there's insensitive or unwelcoming comments that are made, I speak up. It's important. And when making critical decisions, I think it's important to listen and weigh a variety of views from residents and the city council, and, and then find that common ground. Um, and so, like I said before, that's why I supported that, that city council code of conduct four years ago. Uh, to create an environment of consensus where every person feels heard and where everyone feels valued as part of the process. So I appreciate your time and I hope everyone will get out. You can start voting now, absentee ballot, yes, or go to right, the polls right. on November. Maybe you can share some ideas of what you're learning as you're door knocking. I'd like people to know a little bit more about the process and have you share what you're hearing. Well, what but, I, I'll jump in. and. and I think people are being very responsive to what I'm talking about at the doors. Uh -huh. I do talk about a balanced budget. Um, I get good responses uh -huh. when I say this current budget, I always ask tough questions. I get criticized for asking those tough questions, mm -hmm. whether it's the fire department, the police department, or public works department. I'm criticized for yeah. asking those tough questions. I call it accountability. But when we can reduce the proposed budget by $200,000, mm. or close to $200,000, right. and uh, the proposed cost increases per month on the average median household are going to be less than a cup of coffee at Caribou mm. per month. Right. People are saying, okay, that's good. When they see the value of their property going up higher than their taxes, what I'm hearing at the doors is, okay, that's all right. Yeah. Um, I can handle that. Um, what I'm also hearing is uh, they like the fact that we're talking about equity. Uh, but what I'm also hearing is it's good. We're trying to engage communities of color in uh -huh. a way that we've never done before. And that's something that I'm proud to be a leader right, on. Right, right. But what I'm also hearing is we've got to be more sensitive to all communities. Right. So I'm, I'm hearing things like that at the doors. They, they like the innovation. They like the transparency, but they want to see more. Um, what I'm also hearing is civility. Oh. Um, you know, a couple of years, four years ago, uh, we, uh, we voted on a, a city council code of conduct. Well, the majority of us did uh -huh. vote for the code of conduct. A couple of our council members, including some who are running for re-election this year, did not. And so in a time nationally when it is just a mess, a hot mess, and it's going to get even worse next year, when the lack of civility is deplorable, we need to show our local, uh. our community, our children, what civility looks like. And what I'm hearing from residents is they want to see that. Uh, in some cases, unfortunately, they haven't, and they, they demand it and right. want to see it. So those are some things I'm hearing at the door. You know, I'm hearing absolutely not the same things. <laughs> it's been really exciting. Uh -huh. But I bring a little pad of paper, and you, I have had, why is there no access onto Sweeney Lake? It's a public lake. Why can't we get on it? Mm -hmm. I have heard, why are our taxes so expensive? We need to uh, really make sure that we are watching our taxes so they can afford to live in Golden Valley. I am hearing about some uh, somebody drove by and let their dog go to the bathroom in the park and didn't clean up. I have heard about, do you think we could have a pedestrian crosswalk for the kids to go over to the park on in Plymouth? And then be sure to tune in next week when we will have more candidates and more issues for you. Thank you both. Well, for thank you so much for having me.